Democrats use identity politics to keep people in line, to keep black people in line, to keep Latinos in line, to keep gay people in line. I'm black and gay, and I'm seeing them use the same tactics for black people as they do for gay people. Be the person that does not bow to the mob. Don't be that weak idiot to the left. What's going on, Turning Point USA Student Action Summit 2020? I am telling you, oh my God, 2020 has been the craziest decade ever. Like, just completely insane. And one of the best things that I did this year was I moved to the great state of Florida. Which has allowed us to put on this amazing event with all of these amazing speakers, with all of you who are going to be on the front lines of this upcoming culture war battle that we are getting into over the next four years, right? Yes. So I've been with Turning Point for about three years at this point, about two, three years. And we talk a lot about socialism. We talk a lot about how socialism sucks. We talk a lot about how big government sucks. We talk about a lot of this stuff, but in 2020, this was the year where we saw all of this stuff happen with our own two eyes in our own country. So what did we see in 2020? What, did, what happened in 2020? We had a virus that came from China that has completely upended every single thing that we know about our society that we know about each other. And there are so many people out there that are using this virus. They're using the fear of this virus. They are using the division that it causes to help usher in an era of socialism. So this is what they want. All of these congressmen, all of these congressmen and women, all these people on the left, the squad, the entertainment, the media elites, this is what they want, right? And what we have seen this year is that when you have these people push forth these policies, who gets hurt? The American people. And you see what a bunch of hypocrites these elitist leftists are. So when you have Nancy Pelosi talking about locking everything down and talking about having barbershops shut down and all this stuff shut down, but yet we see her going to get her hair done, going to get her hair did. I don't know if y'all been following me on Instagram for a while, but I had some pretty messed up haircuts that I had to get during lockdown, and I would have liked to have gone and get a better haircut as well. You have them locking down and shutting down entire cities across the country. You have them shutting down restaurants. You have Governor Newsom in California. Recall him, by the way shutting down restaurants, and by the way, getting caught at a restaurant and getting a $15,000 wine bill, right? You see Lori Lightfoot in Chicago, shutting down everything. I was gonna say something that's not nice, so I'll just, I'll just leave that alone. No, 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 no. So you have Lori Lightfoot, wanting to shut down Chicago, wanting to shut these cities down, but when she get caught getting a haircut, she says, oh, it's because she has to look good. And you know, look, it's gonna take more than a haircut to, to do that, but... Um, but we see the hypocrisy of these people. And what's going on right now is that we see that hypocrisy and we see the divisions that are being sown in American society right now. And one of the toughest things about having to watch everything that went on this year is that we were so busy sniping at each other that we weren't focused on the real enemy. You had an amazing panel that was here right before me and they talked about who the real enemy is. They talked about the fact that China is the real enemy. Exactly. 
Yeah, China, yeah, China sucks. Um, but they are the ones that did this to our country. And every time I see some leftist talking points about how, you know, this is America's issue because we have to focus on the race and the racism and then all this other stuff, China laughs at us because they know how divided we are and they know that those are the issues that divide us. And the saddest thing about that is to see China laughing at us. As a matter of fact, to see people that are spokespeople for them on Twitter that know exactly what to say. They will fix their mouths to talk about, quote unquote, systemic racism in America. And they'll say, oh, you know, America has to fix this and America has to do that. They will say these things while having people in concentration camps, while putting out a virus that has completely destroyed everything. And so we really need to focus on them as a real enemy. But another enemy that we're dealing right now is the left. And it is the scourge of socialism. And I remember being on this stage last year and being on all of these stages as we had all of our events last year. And we didn't know coronavirus was coming. We never saw any of this stuff coming. But I knew that there would only be one thing that would help us see exactly who these people are going to be when they get power. If we have learned anything this year, it is that socialism is about rules for thee, but not for me. And that is what this is about. And we are in a very vulnerable moment right now as Americans. We really are. There are some people that are your ages, maybe a couple of, uh, a couple of years older than you guys, and they're going to see everything that has gone on with the coronavirus pandemic. They are going to see restaurants getting locked down. They're going to see them losing their jobs. They're going to see going into a bad job market. They're going to see all of these things. And they're going to be like, man, maybe socialism isn't such a bad idea. They're going to say, maybe Andrew Yang is right. And maybe I should get a universal basic income. They're going to say things like, maybe AOC is right. And maybe there should be a $20 minimum wage or a $25 minimum wage. And they're going to say things like maybe all of these people are right. Because God, if, if, if this is what happens, then I just need to be comfortable. I need to make sure that everything's going to be okay. And maybe there should be more government and maybe more government could help make everything okay. But what we have to say to that right now over the next couple of years is hell no. We have to rise up against that. And so the question is, moving forward in this unique moment in American history where there's, I mean, an election literally being stolen right out from under us, but I'm not even going to get into that, right? Not even going to get into that. So the question is, how do we battle this stuff that's coming from the left? The question is, how do we battle these ideas? Because the issues that I have with our movement and some of the things that we talk about is that we're anti lots of things, right? We know big government sucks. We know socialism sucks. We know leftist ideas do not work. We know identity politics and the way that the left uses it sucks, right? But we have to start thinking more about what are we for? What do we believe in? How do we advocate for these things? If we know that capitalism is the greatest system ever and it is something that has raised more people out of poverty than any other situation, issue, program um, in, in the history of the world, how do we talk about that? And I think that it's not enough to just say socialism sucks. It's not enough to just say capitalism is amazing. We need to start looking to all of the things that has happened over the past years. And we have to say, look at that. That's socialism. This is socialism. And what we need all of you to do on your college campuses is to engage in these conversations and to have these conversations with people on your college campuses. Because I'm telling you, the difference between winning and losing 
in the people that are on the front lines of the battle for America, for the culture war, for whatever you want to call it, is you. It is the conversations that you are having with your classmates. It is you standing up to your professors when they try to push left this crap. Those are the issues that we're dealing with. And this is up to you guys to push forward. Now, if we say capitalism is amazing, how do we talk about that? Well, let me tell you a, a, a personal story. Of course, everybody knows my background, and I came from basically nothing in Akron, Ohio, and I just ran into brick walls year after year after year because I was somebody that, and, and you know, when I talk about journalism, when I talk about media, I talk about it because I actually went to Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism and have a degree that is not worth the paper that it's printed on, right? And the issue with that is that I kept on running into wall after wall after wall because I was always sitting and waiting for somebody to give me an opportunity. I can't go out and do this or I can't build that for myself because CNN's gonna do it for me and they're gonna discover me and it's gonna be great or MSNBC is gonna do it or this person's gonna do it or that person's gonna do it. And when I talk about capitalism and when I talk about entrepreneurship and how strong it is, and how we have everything in us, it's because my own story over the past two and a half years has been living proof of that. It is living proof of bootstrapping. It is living proof of the fact that whatever it is that you want to do, you have the tools right in your hands to do it. Two and a half years ago, I was producing for, I was a low-level producer for Fox Business. I said, I've got a voice. Number one, I was so tired of the left, I couldn't see straight. I was so tired of seeing people that looked like me being used to push ideas that actually hurt people that looked like me. I got tired of seeing black elites talk so much about race and racism and all of this stuff when there are so many, number one, there are more black millionaires than at any point in American history right now, right? So if this systemic racism is such a thing and, and, and this, you know, this, uh, this, this objectification or putting down black and brown people, if that was such a big thing, then why are there so many success stories? And I started really asking that question to myself. Why are there so many black and brown success stories? Why are there so many success stories regardless of color that, that come from this country, and that is about entrepreneurship, and that is about the attitude and mentality that you have to have when you are going about making your way through this world. And I'm telling you guys, that is the difference between the way we see the world and the way they see the world. Now, we talk a lot about, you know, the identity politics stuff and the systemic racism and all of that crap. The fundamental difference is that we see the world as a place of limitless opportunity. We see the world as a place where every single person can be successful, and one of the reasons why I'm so in love with this country and that flag is because this is a place that makes it all possible. And I saw that for myself once I took the power into my own hands. We have these amazing supercomputers that are about this big that a lot of you guys are holding on to right now, filming this and, and doing your stories, and there's so much opportunity there. And when I decided to just snap out of it and stop waiting for other people to give me opportunities, and got that supercomputer out of my pocket and started making videos and started using my voice, it, it expanded into something that I never could have seen coming. When I started making videos on Instagram, I didn't know that I was gonna be uh, meeting the president, I didn't know I was gonna be at the White House, I didn't know I was gonna be like, you know, like on, on a private jet with Rick Grinnell, I didn't know any of that stuff was happening or was going to happen. happen. What I knew is that I had a voice and I had something to say. And when I started leaning towards, more towards conservatism is what I realized that the opportunity that we all have 
is already there. This is not something that is going to be handed to you. This is not something that people are going to be tripping over themselves to make you happen. This is America, and you've got to make yourself happen. And every single person in this room can do that. And so, look, how does this relate to being anti-socialism and pro-capitalism? How does this relate to every single thing that the left is saying right now? Well, it's very simple. Everything that is coming from the left right now is advocating for more government intervention, more a higher minimum wage, whatever, right? A higher minimum wage. Um, they want to, you know, uh, wipe away student loans, right? Student loan debt. And let's talk about that student loan debt. Let's talk about how destructive that idea is. As a matter of fact, I have a podcast. I don't know if you guys have listened to it. It's called Rob Smith is Problematic. And so if you've not listened to that, not downloaded it, download and subscribe right now. Tomorrow's episode is all about the quote unquote student loan debt crisis. And what that quote unquote crisis really is, is again, a bunch of elites playing the victim because that is what they do on the left. And they want to play the victim, and they want the American taxpayer to bail them out. The vast majority of people that have upwards of $100,000 in student loan debt have that because they pursued advanced degrees. They have that because they have doctorates, and they have that because they went to law school and they did all that stuff. But you know what else it does? Is it helps them make vastly more money than they would have had they not done that. So why on earth is wiping away those tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loan debt, the American taxpayer's burden, the, ta the burden that you are going to get once you guys start graduating and once you guys start making money. And by the way, when we're talking about capitalism, we're talking about advocating how amazing that system is. And I know you guys want to get involved and you guys are all involved in your college campuses in lots of different ways. What we need more of, especially from your generation, is we want you guys starting your own businesses, starting your own companies, being bosses, being entrepreneurs, because when you become successful and go into your own communities and people see you as that success story, they're gonna ask you, how do I get there? Like, bro, with the, with the Keep America Great cowboy hat on. This dude, say this guy starts a multi-million dollar business, and he's rocking that cap with his multi-million dollar business. People are going to ask, what's that all about? And all you have to say is capitalism, bro. Entrepreneurship. That is what it is. And so guys, this is what is going to differentiate us from the left moving here on out. We have to start talking about these issues. We have to point out the hypocrisy of the left. We have to point out the greatness of capitalism. We have to point out the greatness of that flag and of this nation and what it represents. Because look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm, I'm not a deep state guy. Like I'm not, I'm not none of that stuff, right? But when you look at some of the things that are being pushed out, into the public, when you look at some of these ideas, this minimum wage, free uh, student loan debt, uh, free public college, healthcare for all, all of that other stuff, this stuff is being used, and this coronavirus pandemic is being used to get people used to the idea that they are entitled to something that they did not work for. And we don't want to get people used to that idea right? We don't want people to get used to entitlements. We don't want people to get used to things they, work, they didn't work for. Because let me tell you something. I am from Akron, Ohio. Like, there's a lot of people that try to play me, and they try to act like I'm like some trust fund kid, or I was like some multimillionaire. No, absolutely not. Like, I'm from Akron, Ohio. I went in the military right out of high school so that I could go to college. I busted my hump trying to get to different places and trying to do all of these things. And the difference between us and them is I can tell you all and you will all believe that every single person in this room and in this great nation has the ability to do the exact same thing. <laughs> 
So as we go into this battle against socialism, which is going to intensify over the next four, six, 10, 12 years, as we go into this battle against the left that we are gonna need you all on the front lines for, as we go into this battle to save America, to protect that flag in this home and what we love, I want you all to realize that you have every single thing in you that you need right now to be on the front lines of this battle against socialism and for America because this is a fight that is not going to stop today. This is not a fight that is going to stop tomorrow. This is not a fight that's gonna stop in 2022. This is not a fight that is going to stop in 2024. This is a fight that is going to be going on as long as you live in this great nation of America. And it is a battle that I need every single person in here to continue to fight. Thank you. Thank you.